I have a policy question for you, yes. sir. Let's see if he answers it. Wait. Don't worry about it, little Marco. Gentlemen. Let's hey, hear it. Hey, Gentlemen. Hey, hey, you, ought to, you ought to chill up. Gentlemen, you've got you to do Chris. better than those. This guy has hey. the but rather than doing better, there were moments when it descended into, well, hear it for yourself. This is Trump responding to campaign trail innuendo from Marco Rubio about the size of his hands. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Right. Okay. Donald Trump bragging about the size of his penis is the latest episode in a nomination drama that veered wildly off course long ago. Because he doesn't have answers. No, and no, he's I'm asking us to answer. make him the president of the United States. On stage last night, the remaining three candidates desperately tried to expose him as a fake conservative motivated by greed and ego. We are not going to turn over the conservative movement or the party of Lincoln or Reagan, for example, to someone whose positions are not conservative. It wasn't only Trump's conservative credentials that were under scrutiny, but his business dealings, most particularly a class action from students at Trump University. It involves veterans and it involves teachers and it involves so-called little guys who say that they were fleeced, who say it was a scam. They asked for their money back, and you refused to give them their money back. I gave many why don't people you their tonight, money back. Then Megan, why don't you tonight just, say let, you're going to give the money back? Let me just, is this okay, the debate you want playing out in the general election? I mean, the stakes in this election are too high. Case. And with Hillary Clinton pointing break. out that, that he supported her, her four times in her presidential it's race. It's a the minor civil too. case. Donald, learn not to interrupt. There are many, it's many civil cases. Count to 10, break. Donald. Count to 10. Count to 10. But the numbers are all on Trump's side, not his opponents. He's won the support of far more voters. And as long as the party resists that, the division so clearly on display last night will only deepen. Well, those divisions are certainly evident here as well. This is the Conservative Political Action Conference. It's held every year, but this year, well, it's a particularly lively one. I'm joined here by uh, Steve Hook from Right Hook Radio, which is a conservative uh, radio program. Steve Hook, Right Hook is about the right, uh, the right term for what's happening in the Conservative Party. At the Quite moment. a bit. Haven't you seen it? Did you watch the debate last well, night? Well, we were just talking about the debate, actually. I mean, tell me, who came out of that well? Donald Trump kind of went for gutter language. Did that work? Well, it worked for Donald Trump supporters, and it always will. And that's that's the surprising thing about Trump. What is true of most candidates uh, is 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 not true of Trump. Uh, John Kasich actually came across pretty well, and given the fact I've just heard Kasich here, he had a very we, good reception. Didn't and he, he did have a good reception here, which is a little surprising because he's probably the least conservative next to Trump, I should add. Trump was meant to be here tomorrow, but he's pulled out. Yes. People are interpreting that as. A kind of a, a bit of a snub to the right wing of the party or the grassroots of the party. I think it is, but you know what happened was that there was a lot of uh, talk yesterday, a lot of scuttlebutt, that there was a planned walkout of Trump's speech on Saturday. Uh, Trump, being a, the ultimate manipulator of the media, yeah. said, "Well, I'm not going to give them that red meat to come after me with, so I'll just blow it off." I mean, you've, you've observed and were part of the Tea Party kind of rebellion. How does this compare? This feels like the Republican Party just tearing itself apart. You know what? It, I get that a lot. And on my show, we talk about that a lot. And, and it is. But it is essentially because the Republican Party, uh, the GOP establishment, and you hear a lot of that. I bet you've heard that. The establishment, the rhinos. They have not listened. Uh, the base, the conservative base, the Republican base, even the moderate Republican base, gave them the House, then they gave them the Senate. Governorships and city councils across the fruited plain gave them the Senate. They said, we'll do this, we'll do it, and they never did it. And what happens? The very person that they are now slamming, Donald Trump, he's the ultimate result of the, of the establishment not listening to their own constituents. I know it's a tricky question to even consider at the moment, but what's going to happen? Is Donald Trump going to be the Republican nominee? You guys have crossed the pond, can't figure that out, can no. you? <laughs> we, it, we're struggling. I know. Well, listen, we struggle with it here, too. I think that he probably will be, if you want to know the truth. Um, I just think that the anger has bubbled for so long, and I know that it's easy to say, well, how is it that this guy can talk about anatomy and get away with that? Mm. How can... And it's because people are like, you know what, a pox on all their houses. And this guy may be worth $10 billion, but he sounds like me. The ultimate protest vote, the by the sounds of things. Protest. Okay, Absolutely. Steve, thank you very much for joining us. That's all from here. Back to you in London.